on this day 26 years ago motorsport lost arguably one of the greatest drivers it had ever seen I had Senna. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys and say that I don't really remember Senna. He was just slightly before my time. I remember drivers such as Hill, Schumacher, Hakkinen, and Senna was just before that. So all the information that I know about Senna has been learnt about going through past videos, past interviews, past championships, stuff like that. And even though I never got to experience that Senna magic firsthand, I can safely say that he is one of my motorsport icons. Senna was a man fiercely driven by competition and passion. You can see that by any of the videos you watch. And of course also gave birth to the infamous saying that if you no longer go for a gap, you are no longer a racing driver, which unfortunately nowadays is often taken out of its original context. Now I've never really done one of these videos before um, for Senna. So I thought it'd be a nice idea to honor him in the way that I know how, which is to drive his car at a track that I think is synonymous with his name, Monaco. Watching Senna drive at Monaco and the famously used clip of, well, him doing just that, is one of the things that made me realize that F1, that, that F1 before my time was a lot different. And whilst different doesn't mean better, it gave me a whole new respect from the guys that drove at that time. So whilst I will not be facing the same sort of danger he faced, or the G-forces, or the bumps, or... I'd say fear, but it seems that he didn't have any of that. I'm going to give it my go and, and see if I can revive some of that center magic, if only a little bit, and if only for a day. It's a good noise, this. It's a good noise. So we're in the McLaren MP45, uh, one iteration later than the very famous MP44. For a couple of laps of Monaco, V12 engine, of course, H pattern shifter as well. Really cool driving position where you can see those big fat Goodyear tyres either side and we're doing it all in VR for that authentic experience. Now I've got this turned up super high in my ears because I think there's no other way to experience this car than by deafening yourself otherwise you're robbing yourself of some of the experience. So we're going to just go out for a couple of laps and see if we can channel some of that old centre magic. And the circuit here was all too familiar with the cool feel. <laughs> We're racing at a, uh, a bit of a modern version of the circuit, but it don't matter too much because we're accompanied by that noise, that emotive V12 that people associate with Senna, me included, this McLaren, this livery, this track. Senna won, I think, six times at Monaco. <laughs> Just a circuit that suited his driving style, which was all or nothing. So many great stories about him. One of my favourite. <laughs> oh my. One of my favourite stories of him. I think it was at a, an American race. I forget which one, where he retired because he hit a wall. He goes back to the mechanic and says, that wall moved. And of course everyone laughs it off as a racing driver excuse, but then they go back and find out that someone actually hit the wall earlier on in the race and moved the barrier a couple of centimetres the wrong way. Just goes to show how precise his driving style was. Let's see if we can open her up a bit, shall we? Turn the vault. And the second gear. A little bit of center blipping on the way through and up the hill. Take fifth gear before going down a fourth, down a third. Great noise from behind us. Down a second. Coming through. Casino and downhill now. What a sensation this is. This is why sim racing is something that should be taken seriously as well, especially in VR. When can you have this experience? You can't. Sixth gear. Before dancing on the pedals on the way down and then all nearly sliding on the way in just to caught a little bit of the curb there. To back. Third gear on the front. Oh, soon we should get off it almost. Flat for a swim. Pull this car's a bit quick compared to the real life counterpart, but it doesn't matter. The experience is still there. Sometimes it's good just to have the experience, man. There's a lot to be said for it. We'll give it one more. 
Let's see if we can really give it some. Juttering, you just find yourself completely immersed. About as close as I can get to the entire of the back there. <sighs> goosebumps. Absolute goosebumps. Definitely the Phoenix Alpha Monaco you'll ever see. And definitely far too quick for the era. But it just gives you some of an idea of what made this man so special and what made him a name that is still spoken about fondly and consistently 26 years after that day at Imola. But uh, that's it for the first half of this video. And uh, yeah, second half is. Uh, even more important to me than this. Now you might notice that the title of this video says Icons and not Icon Singular. And that's because this video today, whilst also paying tribute to one of the greatest Formula 1 drivers of all time, I also want to say my piece for my biggest motorsport influence of all time, my granddad, who sadly passed earlier on today. I find it kind of fitting actually that he shares the um, the same day as uh, Senna, given how big of an influence he's had on my life. He is a man that is solely responsible for getting me into motorsport and into racing games. And without him, I could quite honestly say that I wouldn't be here or have the passion that I have today. And it's a gift that I'm eternally thankful for. So whilst it might seem a little bit weird to pay tribute like this, like in a video that's going to be seen by thousands of people, I this is how I've dealt with things like this since I've been ill previously and this is I think something that he would have liked because he he followed my career intently he's always asking me questions about where I was going in the world and what cars I had driven recently he's always asking about the skyline and I just thought it would be nice to revisit the game that sort of brought us together when I was younger and just race a couple of laps for him and for me I suppose so this is that game Gran Turismo 2 something that kind of funnily enough kick-started my streaming career. It all seems so coincidental. Um, but I remember borrowing this game from him and him reading me the manual about understeer and oversteer and all those things and me just having zero idea about what any of that meant but just being completely, I don't know what the word is, just completely entranced by the idea of this game and being able to race all the cars that I like. I wonder if I can find the car that we first used um, in this game. I'd always pick a, uh, a Mark III Supra because it was a good mix of balance and power and after convincing my granddad that was the right car to pick he'd, he'd go for that car too so I'll just see if we can find it I guess in here there you go Mark III Supra even in the same color we had as well really damn cheap and you can put turbos into it so I think it feels fitting to to drive this I suppose right then so race time um here we are skyline to the left of me for a little bit odd about trying to beat that but away we go then in our Supra and in this time I'm going to try and go through as many little stories that I can think of about my granddad as possible while trying not to stack this car. I haven't driven this game for a long time, so please forgive me. But I remember first first seeing this game because my granddad was always the first person to buy new games, etc. when I was younger. And uh, we first played together on the split screen mode and he absolutely kicked my ass. <laughs> he thrashed me. Absolutely. And... Um, it was really pleasant as the time went on. I got a bit quicker and I managed to finally beat him, of course. But then I'd come back another day and there'd be the PlayStation 2 and there'd be Gran Turismo 3 and the whole circus would start again. Um, I'm in no doubt that I inherited my 
kind of madness for racing games and games in general from uh, from that man. He he was the kind of guy to sit down on a Sunday evening and do like an endurance race on his own just because he fucking liked doing it. And even up until a couple of years ago before he um, he started to decline a bit in health, he would sit down and play Forza, um, the, new, the new Forza Motorsport on uh, Xbox One. I remember... <laughs> I remember he rang me up once asking me how he could turn the AI up because they were too slow and he was getting bored. He didn't know how to do it. So obviously the skill was there kind of throughout that. But every every weekend I'd, I'd call him up and it was a really nice call for me because I didn't always live in a very nice home. And it was always nice to call Granddad and speak to him about, about racing. And I remember once I... Uh, I bought a, uh, a Mazda RX-7 in this game, a, um, a Spirit one, and I put a new gearbox and I couldn't figure out why it didn't go as fast on the, um, on the, on the max speed test, and he was telling me it's because of different gear ratios and then told me how to convert kilometers to mile an hour so I could understand it better. <sighs> he was a man that was infinitely passionate about motorsport himself and imbued that into me and this was one of the ways he did that through Gran Turismo it's why I was and I've always have been so privileged to take part in the Gran Turismo live events because for me this is a game that is more than just a game it's a relationship to my grandfather and as long as I'm taking part in those events and being there that relationship is continuing and he's still very much a part of it even if he isn't here now to see it as much as he was before. I have so many stories I could tell you about him and so many things that I could say and not a lot of time to do it in. So I said the best way I like to have him remembered is that when he heard that I, I had bought the Skyline and I said this in the video about the car itself despite being at the time 94 years old and not really being that quick anymore he still insisted that I come up and take him for a ride in it in this twin turbo beast because he had driven it in Gran Turismo and wanted to be in it in real life and have a go in it in real life and that's just the man really and whilst I'm unfortunately not going to win this one this reminds me a bit of when I first raced him and I couldn't quite beat him so thank you all for letting me ramble about this and letting me talk and deal with this the way I want to deal with it I will miss him intensely. And he is truly one of my icons when it comes to racing. I really hope that he can be at peace now and I can do him proud. And continue this weird career that I've made for myself. So thank you for letting me do this guys. And I hope, um, I hope you rest easy, Grandad. I'll see you next time.